yourself? I am the director of platform engineering. Which basically means the boss of RHEL? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes like queen of the universe, right? But <laughs> And then I, I know, you know, we can't talk about release dates or anything like that, and I'm not going to ask about that. RHEL 7 is ready whenever it's ready. But at, at this point in its maturity, how are things shaping up from your perspective? I know last year you guys talked about uh, all the things that are coming, and yeah. how, how's it looking now? I think it feels to me pretty well gelled. Um, it feels like the features, we understand what's going to be there, we understand um, where things are, and it's progressing in you know that, that march toward beta, right? Um, we're at the point where we're flushing things out, um, making sure that the completers are there, and trying to make sure that we're doing the right things and getting, getting you know, the, the testing going. What's the, the scope of uh, user engagement or private betas uh, at this point, if you're able to talk about that and, and how it's being in, in use cases? We haven't done a, a, what I would call a private customer beta for RHEL 7. Yeah. What we've done is we've taken some of the various components, right, so things like the GNOME 3, um, changes or sure. system D or the Anaconda installer yeah. and we brought in teams of customers <laughs> and had them try to use um, the new the new work and see what they thought of it. Yeah. It's actually been really helpful. Um, we've made a lot of changes based on their input and I hope we do more and more and more of that because it's really hard in engineering to get a handle on what the customer use cases are. Yeah. You, know, you get a little bit removed from that, so it's really been helpful for us to bring people in um, and, and see, you know, look over their shoulders as they try to use the installer, um, you know, understand what their experience is like with GNOME 3. So we've got classic mode, by the way, in Fedora 19. Yeah. If you've seen that. I have. Much in that same general classic, direction. Yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty complete. I mean, we're yeah. still, you know, tweaking the edges, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna help the people who have, yeah. you know, who don't want to retrain their fingers, right? Because a lot of people are not gonna retrain their muscle memory. Right, and, and then just so that so that I'm clear, because when I think of uh, of rel, I think core server platform. Certainly, some people will use it with user interface. Lots of people use it headless. Um, mm -hmm. Are we talking about GNOME three and its use for rel seven as a desktop operating system? Uh, well, a lot of our customers do you know, deploy it that way. I'm yeah. in the studios, um, and some of our other customers tend to use it as a desktop virtualization platform, which I think is a really interesting use case. Neat. Uh, um, you get the security of well yeah. underneath all your other guests. Yeah. But we've got our problem with Rel is that it's a little bit schizo, right? You want the customer base, the, the section of the customer base that wants it stable, solid. You don't change the interfaces, and then there are the people who say, "But I've got to have the latest Ruby." And it's been really hard to accommodate those two sets of people. Uh, but we think we've found a way with the software collections. So we've got alternative packaging, it's still RPMs, it installs into, you know, into Opt. Yeah. And you can run parallel Ruby, we've got, um, what have we got in there, Python 2.7, Python 3.3. We're shipping um, Python 3.3, Python 3.3 breaks, three, three? Uh, well, 3.0, well, whatever. Yeah, 3.3. But, but, because that's, that, that would be interesting, I, just as a curiosity on that one, because I know the OpenStack bits are all, oh, okay, because the yes. OpenStack stuff is all two, so wouldn't that break mm. OpenStack well, stuff? Well, this is all totally optional, right? Right. You can install these things in parallel, yeah. and you can choose what one okay. you're going to use. Because, yeah, Python's always a problem, because, you know, we always have the system Python, and pieces of the system depend sure, on sure. that version, so we can't change that out from underneath things. Yeah. So we had to have something that we could install in parallel. Yeah. So we've got MariaDB going in for RHEL 6.5. Really? Mean, it'll, yeah, well, it won't be in RHEL 6.5. It'll be in the software collection, so you can pop it in there if you want. Really? Yeah. We've got updated MySQL. Really? Yeah. That's astounding, because you will cool. be you'll, you'll then be the first enterprise uh, Linux release with MariaDB, because all of them are still sticking with Oracle only. I won't allow MariaDB. Um, is there any kind of so relation? Thank you. Auntie. Thank you. <laughs> well, well, he needs all the help he can get. Yeah. Is is uh, and Mario to be free and open source is great. Yeah. Uh, from the indemnification perspective, that Rel always provides its customers and support. Uh, are those is that software collection also part of that?
that indemnification support cycle? It's on a different support life cycle. It's on, I think, three-year life cycle. Okay. Because that gives us the ability to refresh it because that class of customer needs those refreshes more frequently. Yeah. And if we can just pull it back from the upstream, that it makes it sure. really so much easier for everybody. We've really needed a way to be able to deliver yeah. that kind of that yeah, kind No, of abs abs absolutely. Um, and then on the MarioDB, is there any kind of relationship between uh, your product group and the, what do they call themselves now, SkySQL, MarioDB, or whatever it is now? Yeah, we talk with them a lot. Yeah. I mean, they're friends, right? Okay, um, good. Um, and you said that would be RHEL 6.5? Um, well, the collections, the software collection actually, the, yeah. the software collections went to beta this week. Yeah. It installs on top of, well, 6 dot whatever, right? Yeah. So, 6 dot latest, so, so they're, they're working right now on 6.4. I mean, you can pick it up out of the beta. Good. We've even got um, Node.js in there with Tech Previews. Uh, from an organizational perspective, uh, and I know you mentioned there was some restructuring, what do you see as the challenge of leading this diverse group? Is it a question of herding cats, you know, the standard kind of thing, or was everybody already following the drummer, as it were? You know, I'm really lucky because it's a great team. It's a lot of interesting and committed people who are really engaged in thinking about what we need to do to make REL relevant um, in the next decade, right? Yeah. We're going to be at the base of everything that Red Hat does, and clearly there's a lot of innovation going on around us and over our heads, and there's a lot of work that we're going to be doing in more of a supporting role, but we've got a lot of challenges. Uh, we need to make sure that we're able to deliver things at the right cadence. I think Software Collections takes us in a good direction there. We need to have a firm, stable, secure, absolutely solid core, um, and that's going to be the basis that other things layer on top of.